Today we celebrate the 59th National Maritime Day in our country, dear friends. National Maritime Day is indeed special. It brings together all stakeholders in the shipping industry, policymakers, corporate people and investors, seafarers, fishermen, marine planners and port operators, including researchers, nature scientists, engineers, environmentalists and many more. Propelling Indian Maritime to Net Zero is the theme for the year 2022 and it is my pleasure and delight to be part of this joyful celebration and explain how our country and our state can make this net zero dream a reality. Let us start by understanding what is net zero. To go net zero is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere to zero, or in other words, to become carbon neutral. Why not zero? The climate of the earth, which was stable for the last 12,000 years, is in a precarious condition. Each year, 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere. We are suffering the effects of the greenhouse and the climate crisis with increased temperatures, flooding of low-lying coastlines all over the world, bleaching of coral reefs, polar ice melting at breakneck speed, which will raise sea levels, animal and fish, bird species becoming extinct. We are at a crucial juncture in our planet's destiny. Otherwise, we ourselves would be extinct. What we do in the next few years will determine what happens in the next thousands of years. It will define our legacy for the future generation. India is a signatory of the 2015 Paris Agreement, which set up an ambitious pathway of reducing the Earth's temperatures by 1.5 degrees by 2050 and reducing the CO2 emissions to net zero. The Indian government's commitment to pursuing low carbon development is evident in its ambitious target and path breaking climate initiatives. A Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has declared a net zero target for our country by 2070. In 2018, the IMO Greenhouse Gas Strategy called for maritime sector to reduce CO2 emission level to 50% of 2008 level. This is indeed a unique challenge as shipping is the most difficult sector for decarbonization. With the launching of the central government Sagar Mala program in 2017, the government is investing $123 billion across 415 projects including port modernization and new port development. The Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways plans to operationalize 23 domestic waterways by 2030. This will increase the number of vessels involved in transportation tenfold and therefore the greenhouse gas emission also. What is the impact of the shipping industry on the environment? Shipping accounts for about 3% of the global greenhouse gas emission. The big thing that's underappreciated is that shipping emission grow along with increased trade. So they are set to rise significantly over the coming decades if left unchecked. The International Maritime Organization target is to reduce emissions to at least 50% by 2050. Is that an ambitious target? What steps are required to achieve the goal of net zero emission in the maritime sector? Vessels operating on short sea passages like ferries, transshippers, and all vessels operating in close rivers should be operated on batteries as far as possible or with hybrid green fuel. Hybrid and electric ferries are already operating efficiently in Europe for some years now. The possibility of using renewable energy sources like sun, wind, water has to be explored. So what are the options for powering deep sea vessels? Deep sea vessels or large vessels cannot work on batteries because of long voyages. The following three options can be explored. Biomass, derived fuels, 
So, biofuel or biogas, hydrogen and synthetic non-carbon fuels like ammonia, synthetic fossil fuels like e-methanol that can be carbon neutral based on the production process. What more needs to be done for net zero emission in the maritime sector? To make zero emission vessels a reality by 2050, the shipping sector and fuel supply chain, the supply side and the demand side need to be moving in tandem along with each other and the stakeholders, such as ports, which will be a vital link in making the fuels actually accessible. Transition needs to take place requiring government incentives, investment in research and development, investment in infrastructure and legislation. The classification societies should be prepared to have in place structural modification and retrofit kits to meet the futuristic development in fuel storage, hybrid fuel operations, safety, etc. What does all this mean for the state of Goa? The government of Goa will provide required facilities, incentives, infrastructure and legislation by having in place a policy that will make it binding on all stakeholders to work towards the goal of net zero by 2050. Our government will be the driving force to use renewable energy and show power solutions, thereby creating an ultra low emission zone in Goa by reducing hydrocarbon, which is used in waterways. The following facilities will be set up to fulfill the net zero dream in Goa. Number one, build a network of high voltage electric smart docks, which will supply power to vessels both in the jetty, electrically power all passenger vessels, ferries, water sports and cargo vessels operating on short voyages and in enclosed waters or rivers, replace 75% of hydrocarbon propulsion fuels on the coastal marine sector by 2030, provide hydrogen, ammonia or methane to marine market by 2030, have a network of green hydrogen production facilities across the state, extend high voltage 11,000 volts network to all jetties, ferries, ramps and stationary vessels in Anchorage locations, set up marine hydrogen centers at strategic marine hubs, the stage is set for plenty of opportunities to business and stakeholders who can manufacture, supply or set up the above facility in the shortest possible time and thus benefit from the initiative of the government to propel Indian maritime to net zero. Thank you dear friends. Jai Hind.